Okay, and welcome back to our eighth tutorial. In this case, we're going to talk about game timers. So I went ahead and created our basic skeleton code for what we're going to need. Um, so I chose to make this a mostly static uh, class, uh, just because uh, it's, in my opinion, it's kind of too small in function for a singleton and if you give it a static function it kind of works the same as well so let's get started create our functions and we'll do that here as well okay so while we're at it I will go to game state manager here and um, of course we have to include timer there we go what I want is just to um, update it just to get things done so now we don't have to go anywhere else so what will happen is on every update at the beginning, the first thing that happens is it will calculate the um, time, basically, delta time. Okay, so let's go to definition. In this case, um, so current tech equals um, I think it's called, let's include SCL while we're at it. And I think it's called SDL underscore get ticks. Yeah. And it returns a uh, UN32. That's fine. Okay. So. What we want to do is we want to calculate um, the d delta time every time. So uh, let me see. Voltic equals current tick there we go let's see now what we want is to see yeah, we'll get a float equals uh, current tick minus all tick will return a number in milliseconds now what we want to be able to do is multiply it by or use this value to uh, move our object so may, we want to go, go from ticks to seconds so i'll multiply that by a thousand okay now also if we do breakpoints um, it could be that the next frame could be like two minutes because we're checking stuff so just to make sure that the timer doesn't go crazy we'll see if it's bigger than 0 point let's say 2 f and if it is we will set it to 0 point 2 f okay this will force it not to be too big and let's set it like that I think this is it But let's go check it out. Um, so here we can do include um, there we go. And we'll do vector. Something like this, 
Yeah, we'll set. Uh, there we go. And on update, we'll do something like, or let's uninitialize. And we'll do, what is it, x, y, yeah. So let's say x10 and y300. Okay. So on the update, for we'll do location.x plus equals stl underscore timer. And we'll get dt, which is a float value. And we'll multiply it by whatever speed we want, let's say 100. So now even if the frame rate is really low, the speed should technically be the same. Ah, now, uh, okay. Ah, yes, okay. So this is something with um, with static variables. Um, if you put them in header files, they don't actually like this is just a definition. They don't actually make any memory here. It's the way I understand it. So we'll have to define them just like the functions. So we don't have to put this not static, but we will have to put. We'll have to do it like this. So now it magically can find those two variables. Yep. Okay, so this won't work. Nothing will happen. Uh, now I was expecting it to draw something. So let's have a look-see for a second. Uh, location or like right here. Ah. Maybe 100 is too big. Let's just do 5 then. There we go. Oh, there we go. It actually did something. Now, the reason I said it won't do anything is because this is a integer. So if we do this, and we put a breakpoint here, and we look at it. Uh, we actually look at location. It's integer values, but we kind of want to make it float. So there we go. There we go. OK. So now it stores decimal locations. Five is still pretty fast, so let's do uh, maybe two. I want to kind of see what the DT values is, but let's have a look in it a second. There we go. Now, yeah, I think this doesn't work the way I wanted it to. Maybe if I do it like this, oh. just wondering, checking if this works better. Okay, let's have a look. See, the thing was, it was probably only setting the 10. So now it sets both. Good. There we go. It looks pretty stable. Okay, so let's I want to actually check this. See if I did it correctly. So res is 0 0.02. Current tick is that, all tick is that. Uh is it it's not multiplied, is it? That's why. Uh, not peak. Uh, here, add to watch. You can see. 
the value is one, so one millisecond per frame. So you don't multiply by a thousand, you divide by a thousand, of course. There we go. Now it should hardly move. But it is moving really slow. Good. So my original thing from 100 should now work like I want it to. There you go. So that's how you make a timer. See, I move. The game pauses, but you see it still moves a, a huge chunk. Like it's, I mean, it you look like it jumps, but it doesn't jump crazy far. That's what the 0 0.2 uh, this does. So that's it for timers. And the next tutorial is going to be input. And I'll start with input uh, for keyboard and mouse. And I'll probably move this to way later in the in the engine, just to keep the things a little bit more simple. Because this can get uh, using controllers can get uh, how do you say it complicated? Because you have uh, they can you can unplug a controller or plug it in, and you want to auto detect it. Uh, there's a lot of events happening, so I'll just keep it with keyboard and mouse because there's only one mouse and one keyboard. So. Next tutorial is on input, so see you guys later.